So it was Ludum Dare 50 over the weekend. That's a nice opportunity for anyone to make a game in just three days. And I thought that'd be a good opportunity to try it and put Godot 4 through its paces and see how the alpha holds up when trying to release a game in a short amount of time. And as you can see here, it went rather well. I'll just let it speak for itself for a bit. Hmm, I've never cast this spell before. Ah, the door of inevitable death, my old nemesis. Let's see how long I can last. a long weekend. <laughs> oh jeez. So Godot 4 held up really well. There were a couple of exporting issues, but I'll step through what the actual creation process was like. So it was me, a university friend, an animator friend, and Bingo Flangeworthy, the musician. Josh doing animations was absolutely incredible. It was my first time working with him, and everything he did just blew everything out of the park. He had these really nice Paper Mario style animations that when you put them in 3D you were just, oh, oh it, was good. it was good stuff. Sam did a great job of pulling together a load of the systems, and he was got the actual typing part up and running at the start, which was really integral to the whole process, and I was throwing together a load of 3D stuff. So on the first day we got the theme we were going to use, and that was Delay the Inevitable. We quite quickly settled on the idea of doing a typing game where you were delaying some kind of bad outcome, but actually deciding on what that outcome should be was not so straightforward. We started thinking maybe you were someone ordering drinks at a bar, because drink names would be quite fun to type, but uh, what the actual loss you'd be avoiding was, was didn't fit the theme too well. And Josh did a really nice drawing of a wizard, and once we had that we just needed to find a way to make it work. So we ended up coming up with this idea of, well, I've been watching a lot of Terry Pratchett, so I wanted death involved in some way. Death's pretty inevitable. So we had this idea of a portal that the wizard opened up uh, that would unleash hordes of enemies until the wizard met his inevitable demise. So when we had that idea, it was about 4am, I'd been doing a full day of stuff beforehand, so all I did really here was throw together a scene using some lovely K-Kit assets uh, and set up Godot 4 to look pretty, which really isn't hard. You just turn on SDFGI and SSIL and you end up with some really lovely lighting out of the bat. So I just had a scene there and Josh started working on animations. The next day I woke up pretty early and I just stomped through getting the core of having a wizard in a position and enemies and a portal done. And so by the end of the first day, we just brought in Josh's assets, and we kind of had the crux of the game done. Which was a really nice spot to be in. Fun fact, I forgot the game jam was three days long, because I'd done a lot of two-day game jams. So I was like, oh, we're halfway through, even though I had a whole extra day I didn't remember. So, uh, <laughs> I was thinking, oh, we're on track to finish a day earlier than we were actually timelined for, so that was really nice. So day two was getting a lot of the systems together. We continued to get the rest of the enemies in, and they had dedicated attack animations. So we have a bat with an attack animation, we've got a skeleton with a book, we've got a little babushka doll that pops out, that's really fun. And we've got death with his keyframed animations as well. So when we were putting together the actual scene with the wizard attacking, we wanted typing to feel really visceral and interactive. So we had about nine frames for the wizard. When if you typed a letter, it would cycle through those at, at random, and the wizard would squash down. <laughs> it, it was just really fun. It was very Fairly Odd Parents, Mr. Crocker, <laughs> fast-paced, goofy animations. That was that, that was really good. We had those animations for the wizard. We had the attack animations for the enemy, and we'd started around this time to be getting in some audio from Bingo that was really nice. We had some lovely chill lo-fi jazz menu music and some really intense arcade music for the main game that's a real bang. So that was good stuff. And then the third day came around, because 
had remembered we had a third day to work in. And it was mostly bug fixes. There were lots of little problems that needed tidying up. The way the enemies progressed through the scene is they had fixed points they could go to, and then when you typed them, their word would disappear. And I never actually delete the enemies, I just put them into a global queue, and then as you get further in, it will grab old re and enemies and reuse them. And because of that, there was a lot of problem with enemies building up or not freeing. So if you got attacked or if they died in a weird way, it would be easy for them to stack up and the whole game to look weird. So the whole third day was fixing really, really <laughs> annoying bugs due to trying to put together a game in such a short amount of time and obviously a spaghetti code's going to rear its ugly head. But the that led on to some of the main issues with using Godot 4 for a project like this. I wouldn't advise it yet for a few key reasons. Primarily, you can't export to web at the moment, to the best of my knowledge, and exporting to web's quite... Oh no! So some of the main issues with using Godot 4, as I was just about to say, <laughs> was that uh, you can't export to web. Normally I wouldn't advise doing anything but a web export for game jams because you want to make it as easy as possible for your users to try out your game. But as we were going through this project, we had a couple of social media posts that did rather well. So when it came to actually releasing, we had a pretty good conversion rate of just people in general being willing to actually download the game, even though there wasn't a web build. So in some ways, you could say that the attractiveness of Godot 4 is enough to offset that uh, usefulness of having web builds, but still in general I would advise sticking to web builds for game jams. One of the other key issues we've had is that people who've downloaded have had issues related to the engine itself. There seem to be a bunch of issues on Windows 11 I've experienced, so that's something to be very wary of. You're not going to be able to support everyone perfectly because the engine's in alpha. But outside of that, Windows 10, Mac, and Linux all seem to be running pretty fine. Additionally, the engine itself isn't perfect to work in. We ended up using Godot 4 Alpha 3 because we had some issues on the Mac version of Alpha 5. And even in Alpha 6, I still have some problems on Mac. But the Windows and Linux development experience seems to be more or less smooth in my experience. I've had a very nice time working in Godot 4 so far. Here's hoping I'll get to do web builds in the not too distant future and be able to keep using Godot 4 for game jams. It was really fun, it looked really cool, and it's a lovely scripting language to write in and all the new toys are just really cool. The game's called Word Wizard, you can check it out on Sam's Itch, link in the description. Do check it out, it's a lot of fun. Tell me the highest score you managed to get, it's good stuff. And also do check out Godot for Beginners, there is a section on tweens coming out in the not too distant future and the first bundle of guides have some big improvements. Cheers.